It's Wednesday, February 27th, 2019, and this is All Things Veritas. <laughs> Welcome everyone to my YouTube page, video, vlog, and uh, this is, ladies and gentlemen, my wonderful wife, Vanessa. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be discussing, I don't want to walk on your feet. Oh, you're uh, good, you're good. We're going to be discussing books, of course, and I will discuss where the, 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 you know, the top goes and kind of roll with, roll with it as we go here. Um, nothing really script or anything, but we wanted to start a video and do one together. And, of course, uh, throughout the week, you know, I'll probably do a second one later tonight on some of my own things that I found. But first, uh, I'm going to talk to my wife, and I'm going to ask her, what are you reading? Well, um... I don't know if you want to or is it what I'm trying to read? read. Um, I guess there's been a lot of pulls that I have um, in topics of books, but um, the biggest pull is being able to read because of the kids. Like, if one of the kids start crying and freaking out right now, then I'm going to have to get up and you know, comfort them the way that I can. Um, it's so cool. You have a guest on your no, actually, third episode. Our first fourth? Guest, fourth. What, what are we on? Yeah, this fourth. is the fourth one. Yeah. See, the fourth one, and we already have a special I guest. Know. This is super um, special. Probably so, kind of at some point. Of course, um, I'm just gonna. I, I I have a whole bunch of books that I like to read. Intent to read. Intend to read. Um, and since I married Kyle, I really try to be more dedicated in reading. Uh, he's shown me just how much. You can really have a good conversation with someone when you're knowledgeable uh, with... Yeah, I mean, it's probably one of the... That's what makes you so attractive to me, is that well, you're well. able to grasp... Let's see what got you. With all these... Grasp from all these different... Um, um, what do you call... Disciplines, and pull them into one. Absolutely. So... If I don't make any sense, I'm going to blame Mama Brain. Um, I'll just go over one book that I actually have um, completed. But you also sh should show what you, what you want to do. Yes. So there's books that I have. Um, I'm going to just go over one I've read just to say, hey, this is one I've completely read, and I've actually written a review on it. I'm on Goodreads, so you can try to find me on Goodreads. I try to do a review of every book that I read, whether it's good or bad. Um, you write fun reviews. I try. I try to be open and honest. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Gary Thomas. He's really great. He writes a lot of marriage books. And Kyle and I have actually found it to be a... The music lab? You can turn it off. Kids are in front of a TV, so we can actually do this. Um, we're those type of parents. <laughs> but Gary Thomas um, writes about... Uh, he has Sacred Influence. This is this. This also has Sacred Parenting, which obviously I probably haven't read yet. That's why my kids are sitting in front of a TV right now. Um, but then, what's the? Um, They've been playing, by the way, all day. It is. It's it's the windows are open, and I'm hot. I have to shave this afro. Um, but what is the marriage? Sacred. Sacred marriage and sacred, marriage. sacred parents. The marriage one is Sacred Marriage. So I read this one. Um, we've been working through Sacred Marriage together, but this one I was able to read on my own. Um, Kyle doesn't yeah. like it when we have books that we both want to read. He likes to read them together, like marriage books. Um, but I was saying, we usually have issues with marriage books because um, there are stereotypes that are thrown in a lot of marriage books that we don't fit. Right. I am the more... Um, I don't want to say I wear the pants in the relationship, but I am the more domineering one. And... and Kyle's, he's not one of those guys' guys. Obviously, he has a blog a about guys, books, guys. you know? He doesn't talk about football. He doesn't talk about sports. Um, so, he doesn't really fit those silent, no. moody men, you know? Um, so, that's usually the altercation that we come to when it comes to marriage books. But this one, Sacred Influence, if I, out of five stars, I would give this three and a half. Um, talking about Sacred really? Influence, yeah. I think good. three and a half is pretty good. Okay. It's average. I'm like, I thought it was written um, in a good way that I could read. Uh, I dropped it probably one star because of the stereotypes thrown in there. Um, but the whole concept of how you can influence your husband, my husband saved, thankfully. 
but I still have the power to influence him with my spiritual walk. And it's not one of those books that say, hey, you know, marry a lost man because you'll be able to influence him. It's more of like, you need to do what you're supposed to do. And if you do, then God will honor it and um, you'll reap blessings of some sort from that. Mm -hmm. So anyone that is going through a troubled time through their marriage um, or one that just wants to figure out how they can really encourage their husbands to continue to do what's right, read this. I read this when I was really going through a spiritual drought. Um, and I really found out that my spiritual relationship with God was really influencing my husband. So um, I would give this uh, a recommendation for especially spiritually mature um, women. And let's see. Kyle, want me to grab her? Oh, okay. Alright, um, let's see. I'll go over one other book here real quick um, before Kyle takes over. He actually just gave me this for um, <laughs> for Valentine's Day. And it's kind of been our thing is like our first Valentine's Day that we had, I got him Crazy Love um, by uh, Francis Chan. And so we kind of have this thing where we gift each other books. So this one right here. Um, is by Paul Tripp, Paul David Tripp, and we have some of his other books, but I'll go over this one. This is basically your Morning by Morning by Charles Spurgeon light version. Um, this is based off of some things that he has tweeted. Uh, I like it because I can sit down real quick while I'm nursing my daughter, and I can read it very quickly. It has spiritual references that I can look on my phone. Um, you know, the verses. And so far, it's been really encouraging. Uh, I would say that the only thing I don't like about it is he repeats some topics, but mm -hmm. I think because he's going by tweets that he's done, I can see why that would be an issue um, for him. So he repeats, when you say repeats up, he actually kind of forgets what, like, like what he did like the months ago it's, kind of thing? It's kind of repetitious. Okay. And like, I've been eating with like him as repetition. He's talking like about writing a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, Paul. Well, that's true. His writing, his writing is, is repetitive. He, very repetitive. He, he, says, he says a lot, but sometimes he goes way over. He says a lot about the same thing and yeah. too much. Yeah. So that's kind of what it is. But at this point where I'm at, you know, it's what, February, whatever. Um, Which way is <laughs> He's talking about grace a lot. And yeah. I have been learning a lot about grace in my own life and giving myself grace. Um God has been speaking to me a lot. It's crazy, you know, like going through a spiritual drought and then you're like, I really am intent on searching him and then he reveals so much good in your life right. that sanctification happens whether you want it or not. Um, but he showed me that instead of looking for and searching for perfection as a mom and as a wife and all the, I guess you can say superficial areas mm -hmm. that I need to search for faithfulness and to be faithful. And I have the power and the grace to be able to be faithful. So, this is what I'm working through right cool. now. And it sounds like my daughter is happy. She's back to good place. So, a companion for this one. As you say that, she's Is this one. Disciplines of Grace. So, this is by Jerry Bridges. Um, this book was written initially in 1994. I don't know who Jerry Bridges is. I'm sure Kyle could tell you more about who this man is. Pastor and theologian. But I will get you. Yeah, I, I guess. I think he's still alive. He's well known. Not in my circle. <laughs> uh, but I've been reading this. It's been very good. And it's really um, ties along to another book that I have been kind of floating through. Um, but I won't talk about that other one right now. But really something that talks about how my performance daily spiritually doesn't control what god and how god treats me so that's been a really big thing um for me right now but i guess that's one topic of things that i've been going through kyle you want to come in she's fine, she's fine? She's, she got like well <laughs> baby girl's happy yeah. so hopefully the background noise won't be much of a distraction well the the reason I want to check about background noise is because copyright issues, YouTube will take my video right off. And we don't want that to happen. No. Maybe if I speak loud enough. No. Um, so I just went over some spiritually helping um, help books that I've had, um, things that I would recommend. So other things that I am reading. Well, you were talking about your midwifery. 
Yes. So I went to school to be a midwife. Um, Midwife's College of Utah. I was there for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, Working with a midwife in Corpus Christi. Really great. But all in all, that got me really involved into women's health. Right. Um, I know I put a pause on the midwifery because, yes, it's midwifery. Midwifery? <laughs> I call it midwifery. Don't be hating me. Um, so I have a really big passion on anything about women. And then, of course, spiritual things. So let me see. How do I want to blend this together? Um, so I guess I can go just by the first book that I that Kyle gave I me. This, this was, what was this for? So we went to half was, price. Yes. So this was a, this was our anniversary. So what we did for the yes. our anniversary is that I think we each got twenty bucks, right. and, and we, we went to, to half price we books. We picked what books we thought we would each like, and it just so happened. I'm sorry, I do this without my glasses. My I think face is hurting lately. Your uh, face is hurting too. Well, <laughs> um, the this book that she's about to show, I learned about it from a book club that I was interested in joining in the area, and. It, I guess it's. I guess there's just a lot of women in the book club. But anyways, this book came up highly recommended, and I knew it, my wife would love it. So yeah. So you it kind of blends you in. Love it. Okay. So um, this book is called "Women Who Run with Wolves: Myths and Stories of Wild Women Archetypes." So very young. I would man. I would call myself a feminist. Um, but not oh. your typical feminist, <laughs> and he will discuss that himself. No, you'll discuss his whole, it with me. Or we'll discuss it together, because a man can't talk about feminism. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Um, but I, I really like this book. He got it for me. Um, you can take that as a date tip, too. $20 if you like books, and you'll really find out if your spouse really knows you. <laughs> I don't even remember what I got you that time. But, yeah, so I have been casually reading this i mean it's just myths and stuff um just around women so i find it very empowering i like i'm um, hearing about women in history um take it as a grain of salt it's not a christian book no. so i don't only read christian books i don't only watch christian tv shows i don't only have christian friends i know it's horrible <laughs> um so this is a really good book it's really thick so um i hopefully i will get through this by the end of the year. Um, but I don't know. Have you started it? I have. I've gone through the introduction and I've read that probably like twice. <laughs> um, I haven't read any of the myths yet. But what do you think that book is going to say? Like, what is it you hope to get out of it anyway? I would say I'd like to understand. Women are perceived differently in different cultures. Mm -hmm. So this woman, this book goes through different cultures yes. and um, the folklore. I mean, we have our own folklore about right. women in uh, a lot our culture. Um, hey, you can't. That's not copyrighted. No background noise. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. What is a good? I mean, there's Greek mythology and everything. There's there's women right. in. Some, yeah, it's true. There's a lot you can see. Probably from an anthropological standpoint, about what, what about womanhood, about what is what does it mean to be a woman, and this is also just another way, of course, from Carl Jung. That's kind of for her standpoint is in psychology. She was under Jung actually, and another Jungian is Jordan Peterson, right? Like he's big influence now, and uh, it's a, it's interesting how Young's views are having a lot of influence and comeback in the United States and around the world. So that will be a good thing to talk about as well. And you know, like I would call myself uh, a wild woman that would run with wolves. <laughs> uh, and it really is a lot of these type of books really push towards women knowing themselves. And in this, probably this author's sense, I don't fully agree with. Um, and with the, I guess you can say the, the quote, know thyself, mm -hmm. um, and how that's used, I don't agree with, but I really believe that women do need to know themselves, right. um, the power that they have inside them. And I say that in, um, not just a spiritual sense as the power of Christ, but I think that just the power of how we can 
influence our husbands um, and the power of just have, giving birth. Yeah. Um, and really just, we are stronger than what we really know. Um, our, physically, we're stronger. Right. We do, it's not a joke. It is a joke, but the joke that, you know, God gave man a colt uh, so he can know what childbirth is like. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, women deal with a lot. We physically can handle a lot. So um, I appreciate this book. Thank you for giving it to mm -hmm. me. I appreciate it. Um, and I think that one would tie in with something that I had gotten a while ago mm -hmm. as a Christian. Um, this one, I, I really feel like, especially when Kyle is going into the ministry and as a pastor, and I'm going to be a pastor's wife, um, <laughs> women slaves and the gender debate and yep. this one is the complementarian response to the redemptive movement hermeneutic so I really don't have a strong position on this um, this is also written by Benjamin Roach and yeah I don't have a strong opinion on it I know how God is designed and is working in our marriage right. and complementarianism but I guess you can say when we're looking at what our culture is doing now and the roles that wives and husbands right. are, you know, we fight. We want to fight against the norms. We want to fight against the stereotypes. And we want to fight against what we perceive Scripture has told us for so long. Um, but, you know, with Scripture, there's, come, there's been a history of misinterpretation. And so, what? as his wife, I want to be empowered to influence him and empowered to know who I am as God has created me. Look at that. I learned from this man um, right here. So that's called. I really, this one is one of those books that this is, this is not a book to read. This is a book to study and to take Check out. the sources. Um, there's like a really strong bibliography. I like strong bibliographies because I think that gives us more sources to look through what we're going to fill our bookshelves with. But along with bibliographies is the most important thing is right here. We have an index of scripture. So when I try to figure out what my identity is as a woman right. um, to and a wife. And then bringing on another thing, which I will talk about later. We're talking about slaves here, slaves in the Bible. We, we hear that often mm. as well as a... This is the issue that discredits scripture, women and slaves. And I, we believe that scripture has um, the authority and is divinely inspired. Yep. And from first book in the Bible of Genesis, to the last book of Revelation, it is applicable for now. Um, and so women, slaves, and the gender debate, it has a purpose now. Um, I guess you got me this. Yes. Uh, this book today. Show them about that. All right. Cover the price, they, so they don't know how cheap I am. <laughs> Actually, this one was, I'll be honest, we, we get a lot of our books at Goodwill. I'm a very, very thirsty, yeah. cheap wife when it comes to books because I can't afford it. The way you should be good. shopping. The way, yeah, I think this was only a, do a dollar and a quarter. The tag right Anyways, here. show them this. I don't know anything about this book. Uh, yes, this is, so Natalie uh, Angler? Angler? Ang no, Angler. That's Ager? not Angler. Angler. Anger, I, anger. I should have, I should have remembered her name, uh, how to pronounce her name. But this book is quite famous. It's, I think it was just written in. I know it's written in the thousands. Uh, it was no, it was just okay. It was published in 1999, but uh, it still has quite an impact, especially in these times Fall. where about. Mm -hmm. uh, about what is womanhood, uh, she explores it from, of course, uh, not just, she's a biologist, and so she doesn't just look at it from she a... Looks like she talks about female biology, <laughs> which I'm all she about. She does, she does, but she also explores, you know, a lot more deeper than that, and... She's it's breasts are a funny thing, really. We should <laughs> learn to laugh at them. See, she talks about all parts of the body, and then she connects it to just about what is a woman inside and out, basically, spiritual, but also physical and mentally, and again, she used it from a biological standpoint, and that's controversial in a time where mm -hmm. we say that there is, you know, transgenderism, or just there is binary, and all the, you know, the, the whole division that's taking place, and about there are more than two genders, 
and uh, that is also, of course, controversial. No, we're not going to talk about that right now. But that is also controversial, of course, for the feminists, some feminists, a lot of feminist movement, who have been fighting for women, and now we're saying there are no women. But, of course, I don't believe that. Uh, there are male and female, but that's a totally different subject for a totally different time. But that's why that book is relevant and definitely advisable to read. So I'll probably just look through this one. It'll go on my shelf. I'm looking here, and I guess she has a lot of sources and citations in here. She does. So I'm wondering how um, this really... She talks about genetics here. Um, right which is interesting to me. And I'll tie that into another book that I got today, which really interests me. Doesn't talk about women, but this is called Identically Different, Why We Can Change Our Genes. And I'm interested in anything related to genetics at this time because I found out that I have just thankfully only one mutation of the MTHFR, um, but I have a genetic mutation and I found that out by going to 23andMe and getting the raw data and having that interpreted. And um, with that interpretation, I found out I was having as many miscarriages as I was having because I clocked. Uh, and so during the first uh, trimester, I would be losing my babies because of the clotting issue that I'd be having. So I ended up taking a, um, a baby aspirin every single day up until 32 weeks or something. So I had our little one. So this one talks about the genetics and we can talk about how women in genetics. Yes. So it, it kind of blends together right here. Um, Just a correction. Uh, she writes for the New York Times, or was writing for the New York Times in the area of biology. I assume she has something in degree with biology because it's New York Times, but... Anyways, I just know the, the book. Table. I don't really don't know as much about the author. Go ahead. Where's that? Wait, there was a book on the table earlier. Did no one want to do it? Yes. Where's that? I will grab that. Go ahead. Um, why don't you grab that one? Um, talking about the kind of complementary to this one, um, women slaves in the gender debate. Um, this one is uh, the cry of Tamar, and uh, this was written by Pamela Cooper White, and she is actually a professor of pastoral theology. Um, excuse me, Pasho is Benji and Nancy Clapgutter, professional pastoral theology. Um, I know that she is actually a pastor herself. Um, and anyways, this has to do with violence against women and the church's response. And I feel like just with the recent things that have been happening, just in the Southern Baptist theology, um, Southern Baptist convent, uh, what's it yes, called? SBC. Yeah. SBC. Uh, I'm, I've only been Southern Baptist for maybe two years, so I really don't know how that works. Um, but anyways, um, things have been going on there, um, with the Reformed and even the Catholic Church, let's be honest. Um, we need to have some really hard conversations, and I think this woman approaches it, um, and she approaches this also as how the clergy is supposed to deal with it, and not shun it, um, believe women to a good extent of what's going on. Um, it really goes and takes this, as it says in Second Samuel 13, um, talks about how Tamar was raped by her brother. And how King David approached that, and how it affected the kingdom. And uh, it's not a very centralized issue that happens. It spreads beyond just the family. It affects the church. It affects um, women, and historically. So this is talks about. It's it's really I think is more of a guide to clergy on how to approach rape, uh, incest. Um, sexual abuse what's um, her, in the church. What's her background? I think she is um, Episcopalian, but I would not. I think that's right. It's okay. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I don't don't hold me to that. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I really like about this book is, as I said before, I know a book is good when the notes and everything yes, is a that. big part of the book so like starting here from page 264 to what's the that? index whatever that was but three 
329. And this book, I'm going to show you the font. It's intense. Like, this is not an easy read book. No. Um, this is not something that I'm going to sit down and like, oh, I'm going to read that, how this goes. No, this is, so is going to be like a side-by-side -side study. Um, so something a little bit lighter and a little bit funner for me. Um, I don't even know what you're reading anymore. And what I don't even know what I'm reading anymore, but these are just the fun things that I've been going through. So, but you do have a consistency. Which I do is have a I consistency. Like, which is usually women and babies <laughs> and theology of some sort. But. So, okay, so I, I got really excited because I found this book at the thrift store and it's been on my wish list. I'm glad that I had self-control and didn't buy it. So, The Witches by Stacy. Is it Schiff? Yes, Schiff. She writes a Benjamin Franklin book that I hope that I can read. Kyle already owns it. Yes. Um, and you own her Cleopatra. Right. I was going to say, I own the Cleopatra. You got the other one. Oh, I have the Benjamin yes. Franklin? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, it's ours, but... Anyways, so yes, I'm not the title writer. about witches because that's what midwives... We're always accused of being, um, historically, they've been called witches. Um, but I like this because it deals with the Puritans, the Salem witch trials. Right. Like, that is something that I'm really interested in because <laughs> the Puritans um, really were deceived. And they were very religious. I mean, we talk about... What do you mean you by deceived? Because we're going to have some Puritan... I love the Puritans. You like the Puritans. We like the Puritans. Yes. Puritan theology is really great. But there are a lot of holes. Yes. And I feel like we uphold the we Puritans and reform theology. We don't like, standard. I mean, we're reading it. You're reading the Doctrine of right. Repentance, you know. And they're great. But they really were not balanced. And I feel like no. that's something that we're all prone to. Right. Um, we look back to the Puritans... And and we think about even just early New England and you know like when America first started Christians and but there was still um, a gross misinterpretation of Scripture yes. and what grace and sanctification really looked like and for me when I read these books like which is written by a secular um, author and how really it shows me just how deceived I could be. And it makes me question what what do I believe, why I believe it, and how the true perception of it is. How, how are people going to look at it back like 300, 400 years from now? Uh, is it going to be consistent? Or are they going to be like these people were very uh, superstitious? And really, that's what you'll find here. I mean, they were feared. They were uh, they were scared. And we know God's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and of a sound mind. That's not how they approached it. So um, I have, I'm have i reading that one. Very big, very intense. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm about this much way through it. So not far. It's a very big book. It is. But I'm reading on um, that one. But she writes really, time. really well. So far, I like the, the writing style. And her, she's very... She's very biographical. I mean, she did about Cleopatra and others, but in this case, like, she just does an excellent. From what it, from what I've heard and what I've, you know, see my wife talk she about. She did it, or the people that worked for her. Well, yeah. <laughs> she does a good job. She's she's done well, so I can't judge her for that. Um, and on a lighter note, there is this book, "The Devil Made Me Do It." Boom. And um. It's Discover the Antics of New England's Original Criminals and How the Courts Punish Them for Their Misdeeds. And so this isn't just basic, oh, little crime stories. I mean, these were the Puritans, and these were very right. religious people, and how they treated um, crime and punishment during that time, and how they thought about bestiality, uh, masturbation, how they thought about how the family should be governed, homosexuality, and how they really treated it during that time. Right. Um... And it makes you laugh on how this book, the book approaches it in a way that makes you laugh. But when I read it, I'm like, eek. Oh, no. So. What happened? Oh, no, I don't know what happened. His um, computer, it, uh, I guess it went to screensaver because I've been talking so much. Well, I don't know uh, also, you know, talks about the uh, Salem witch trials as well. So this is something that it has pictures in it. I'll show you. 
And it's just fun. That's quite another picture. Thing. Yeah, there's pictures in it. I would leave this out just for. I would say this is good bathroom material too. No, but it's it's a serious, <laughs> it's, it's enough. To yeah, throw. I mean it has things that cites and sources. I mean it's not a willy nilly book, um, but it really talks about issues. I think that it's, happen. I think it's a good book that also, if you're a studier of law and you want to do history of law, you want to understand too, especially in the early America. Well, the, religion has always relig- played a big factor the in of law. religion and politics and in law, right? So that's what I was going to say. Yeah, I still wouldn't be to the bathroom. <laughs> Our babies. Yeah, she's having a good time. So different things that influenced the Revolutionary War, I see in here. Um, but yeah, like being spiritual and being very religious is one thing, but. We can see that there are holes and errors if yeah. things aren't, I mean, yes. these we're not Christ-like actions. And um, we can't uphold things of the past fully. Uh, but we can learn from as the past. Being, we, but we can learn from the past, right. you know. Our spiritual forefathers had issues. Um, I don't think it fully discredits them. Um, but I think that with their faults and with their errors, we should look back and say we're not going to do that again. Right. So. But it also should keep you mindful of when you're reading their works to don't always just take them for what they're saying, mm-hmm. you know, verbatim, you know, test it. Put mm-hmm. it in scripture, put it to our understanding, and, you know, just some common sense too, right? Like, uh, it's, it's not good to, you know, we're not about what, like the Salem witch trials, right? I mean... Uh, whether, there are, whether you women are, are you know, midwives or witches or not, women, I, I'm not going to be drowning you. <laughs> it's, you know, she uh, if she floats, she's, she's a witch. If she sinks, she's a witch. Well, you shouldn't do both she's either. A witch. So that's just ridiculous. But you know what I'm trying to say is really, uh, you know, we, we need to be careful. And that goes with any of anything we read and anything that influences us. Uh, we need to be mindful of, you know, is it influences us in the right way? Yeah. So if you've read any of these books fully and you would like to tell me what your opinion is, what your thoughts were when you read it, um, things I should be worried or concerned about, just let me know. I don't believe everything I read. Um, just like we don't believe everything we right. watch on YouTube right. or on TV, you know. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback on this book. Um, I have notes in here about things that I didn't believe. This is something that I actually took my time, and if I didn't agree with it, I totally, you know... Yeah, you tore it up. <laughs> I, tore, I tore up some parts of it. Um, but, yeah. Thank you so much for letting me share some of the books that wow. I've been enjoying or am excited to read and get the few five minutes or ten minutes a night... Like you know, can you read it? So well, hopefully you get more. I mean, of course, I want you to have more, and uh, hopefully we get to do this more and have just kind of more in depth conversations, perhaps on a subject or a book. Uh, it's good to have you know, multiple perspectives, and views, even you know, even from a Christian standpoint. I know that you and I always don't see eye to eye and see the same things, and of course, women in a time like these are important to feed and to mm-hmm. inform so uh definitely but thank you and uh, all right thanks for watching all right uh, thank you guys uh please like uh s- <laughs> like, like share, share and subscribe, subscribe. Yeah. and we'll put links of the books yes. all um in the comments check them out and when they're affiliated links so you can support us by purchasing those books through those links thank you we so would much. appreciate it yes thank you bye, bye.